So now we have to finish building the circuit, but I thought I would, uh, you know, show it a little bit more before we add the inductor because it's going to block things. We have a diode that's reverse bias, so right now it's not going to light up at all. There's no way to get it to light up because the diode's in backwards, the LED. It's uh, blocking current when we close the switch. When I bring in the inductor. Now, the inductor will conduct when I close the switch, but the diode won't. The thing is, when I release the switch, you're going to see the LED flash right there. It's kind of covered by the inductor and you know, not a bright flash. We just have like a real brief period where current is flowing. So that is the reason why I have the uh, LED right there. You would usually use a rectifier diode, but in any case, when we close the switch, again, the LED is backwards. It's not going to conduct current, but current's going to start flowing through the inductor. It's important to realize the inductor does not conduct instantly. So um, the voltage is going to build up across it. It's going to start pushing current and then voltage is going to go down a little bit. At some point the resistor is going to limit the current and the uh, inductor has a little bit of resistance as well. Not uh, near as much as the resistor there, but it does have some. So be aware of that. Um, some inductors though don't have as much resistance as these ones do. So maybe too much current would flow and you got to limit. Be aware of that. But in any case, as I said before, doesn't conduct instantly when you close the switch, but doesn't matter. The LED is not going to light up when you close the switch. Now, we got current flowing. I'm holding the uh, button right now. The reason why the LED flashes and the reason why you want a diode, you know, um, probably not an LED, but, um, you know, LED is a diode. There's uh, better diodes for it, rectifier diodes and so on. But in any case, um, the reason why we have a diode here was to capture that energy. You saw the flash. As I said, the inductor does not conduct instantly. It also does not stop conducting instantly when you remove a voltage from it. When you remove the voltage from it, it keeps moving current. And in order to do so, it builds up its own uh, voltage. So without the diode there, you'll see, you might see a spark. If it's a large inductor, you'll definitely see a spark uh, with the switch contacts without a diode. So it's going to keep that current flowing. It builds up a voltage in order to do so. Then you'll see that spark. If you have an integrated circuit that's, uh, you know, uh, applying voltage and then removing voltage, you might destroy that integrated circuit. Um, the switch will probably do a whole lot better, even this small one. Um, but, you know, if the, the spark is big enough, you got a big enough inductor, you could vaporize metal. So you got a diode there. What that does is, uh, remember, you're cutting the power the inductor is still conducting as the magnetic field collapses. So when you start to get current to flow, a magnetic field builds up. As soon as you cut power, it keeps that current flowing by the magnetic field collapsing. And um, so that's how it keeps conducting. And uh, with the diode, instead of having to build up a large voltage to keep that current flowing, the voltage stays basically the same, but the current flows through the diode back to the inductor right there. And again, it's really brief. It's not a lot of stored charge, but there is stored charge there, and it's going to keep moving um, no matter what you do, especially the larger inductors. You may have like really, really small inductors that, um, you know, can't uh, do much, but uh, the large ones can cause a lot of damage, but you're pretty safe with the uh, diode there because as I said before, the magnetic field is going to collapse, current's going to keep flowing briefly right there, and come to a gentle stop.